Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm gonna be going over how big of a difference using sprite nodes and proxies can make in render times using Redshift. So as you can see here, I have just a simple scene set up with a few trees thrown in and I've rendered it out using a couple different methods. And so as you can see, I have just the regular image here, which doesn't have the proxies set up or the sprite nodes set up. And it, had, it took three minutes and 52 seconds to render out. So pretty significant time there, especially if you're gonna be rendering out a bunch of frames for an animation or something like that. It's gonna be quite a bit of time dedicated to rendering. So we can clean that up a little bit just by using proxies. See the image looks the exact same, except for it took eight seconds less to render. So that would save you a pretty significant amount of time depending on how long your animation would be. But the big thing here is the sprite node. So if you use this, it is going to change your look a little bit because it changes the way that Redshift looks at the geometry and the transparency, but it decreases render time significantly. So as you can see, there's a difference between the two, but the time it took to render out this image with the sprite node setup was only 48 seconds. So a very very big jump in uh, render time between using a sprite node and not using a sprite node and then if you use the proxies and set up a a tree or whatever with uh, the sprites and then set up as a proxy same image again nothing changes just renders again eight seconds faster so you can save yourself over three minutes of render time which is a significant amount especially if you're using uh, like a render farm or something where you're paying for the amount of time you're using over a long animation that can save you quite a bit of money. But let's go ahead and show you just real quick on how to set this actually up. So if I jump into the shader, uh, the Redshift shader here for the sprite node, I basically just have the texture thrown into the material along with the normal map. And then I have that piped into a sprite node, which you can just find in materials, just type in sprite or whatever. But you click on this and then you set up your image path, same image that you use for your texture right here, just pipe that directly into your sprite node, and then you wanna set it up to however you want to use your opacity. So this has an alpha, so I just use the alpha, and it makes it you know, transparent. So basically it just takes over the transparency, so if you would, were to take the alpha channel from this and then pipe it directly into the redshift material in the uh, the overall and the opacity setting right there, it would do the same thing, but it would, uh, I mean, it would look a little bit different as you guys saw, but the way that it actually calculates in Redshift is a little bit different. So if you go and read the documentation on the sprite node, it will explain it probably better than I can, but basically when you use the opacity right here, it's going to send a ray from your camera into the scene and it's going to have to calculate and send another ray actually for the refraction and everything like that for, to actually detect that, hey, it's not uh, not being rendered. But if you use the sprite node, it basically bypasses that from my understanding. I might be explaining that totally wrong, but go read the documentation and you can, you can kind of get it for yourself. But it makes the render times significantly, significantly faster. So I would definitely, definitely recommend using that. Uh, both these, all these trees are just expo exported from SpeedTree. So super simple setup, super easy to do. And I would definitely recommend doing it. It actually, I think with the sprite node, it actually looks better than with not using it. But that's my personal opinion. Either way, uh, hopefully this helped you out and gave you an idea of how much time this can save you and hopefully you can utilize it in the future for your purposes. But I have some other videos on my channel uh, for tips on Redshift and 740 in general. Please check those out if you want some other useful tips. But other than that, uh, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.